welcome back to another video this really popped when i saw it that to me is a monster increase again this book got hot this book is ready to go higher so let's jump right into it we are back today with another statue review from diamond select toys without further ado let's get into the review What is going on YouTube? This is Lawrence over at Mighty Comics and Collectibles, and thank you for joining me for another video here on the channel. Today we have something a little bit different. We're gonna do a spotlight on one of my favorite artists. This one, of course, being John Romita Sr. You guys know he's my absolute favorite. So do me a favor, if you enjoy this series, tap that like button. If you're not a subscriber of the channel, smash that sub button. If you guys know, once we get to 5,000 subs, I'm giving away an Iron Man 1. That's right. So like I said, if you enjoy this series, comment down below. My goal is to give you a little bit of information about the artist himself and then dive into the top 10 covers that I feel are his best. You guys ready? Let's check it out. John Romita is an American comic book artist best known for his work on Marvel Comics, The Amazing Spider-Man, and for co-creating characters including Mary Jane Watson, The Punisher, and Wolverine. His first comic work was in 1949 as a ghostwriter for Timely Comics, the precursor to Marvel, through which Romita met then-editor-in-chief Stan Lee. In 1951, Ramita began drawing horror, war, and romance comics for Atlas Comics, previously Timely, and also drew his first superhero work, a 1950s revival of Captain America. He began working exclusively for DC Comics from 1958 to 1965, and was the artist for many of their romance comics. Ramita joined Marvel in 1965, initially drawing Daredevil comics. In 1966, Spider-Man artist and co-creator Steve Ditko left Marvel, and Ramita was chosen by writer Stan Lee as the new artist for the Amazing Spider-Man title. Within a year of Ramita becoming the Spider-Man artist, the Amazing Spider-Man rose from Marvel's second best-selling title to the company's top seller. He was introduced into the Will Eisner Comic Book Hall of Fame in 2002. At the 10 spot on this list is a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 70 and what I call the Spotlight cover. Absolutely beautiful work where you see Spider-Man centered on the brick and of course the spotlight from the police. A lot of people don't know if you haven't read this book, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Spidey on the lamb hides a tablet in Peter's closet. The kingpin breaks jail vowing to get Spider-Man and the tablet. Spidey obliges him and the two battle. In the midst of the battle, J. Jonah Jameson, driven by Ned Leeds, appears and calls her the police. A mysterious car with a woman driver appears and the kingpin gets away. J. Jonah Jameson is absolutely living and actually has an apparent fatal heart attack. And so we know, is Spider-Man a true murderer? That's the gist of this book. Regardless, I had to put it at the 10th spot, one of my favorite subtle Spidey covers. Coming in at number 9 on my list is a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 42 and this amazing cover, The Birth of a Superhero. However, what most people don't know, a particularly seminal moment that Ramita Sr. helped cement into Marvel Comics history was Mary Jane Watson's first full appearance in this issue. It's in this issue where Peter's Aunt May and neighbor Anna Watson successfully introduce their nephew and niece, Mary Jane, who delivers her most iconic quote of all time. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot. The one thing that made Ramita great was his use of colors. I always look at this book, especially with the dark blue background, a different shade of blue of Spider-Man and the pops of yellow and green from the character on the cover. One of his best, but it's still only nine on my list. Coming in at number eight on my list as a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 56 and this iconic Doc Ock joined Spider-Man front cover. Yes, it's all over the newspaper and I happen to love newspaper covers. In this issue, Spidey has amnesia and Doc Ock convinces him that they are partners. Will he fail or just go along with it until his memory comes back? This is a quintessential John Romita cover, and it's actually a better book because it is a true first appearance of Captain Stacy. But if we're just speaking about the cover alone, anytime we have two major characters coming out of a newspaper with a big headline, I'm always drawn to that type of cover. One of his best. At number seven on my top John Romita cover list, it is a copy of Amazing Spider Man number 100, the anniversary issue. The Spider or the Man. In this issue, Peter Parker concocts a potion to take away his powers forever. He passes out and wakes up with six arms. In this issue, there are cameos by the Green Goblin, Kingpin, Dr. Octopus, the Vulture, the Lizard, and Captain Stacy. As you can see, this cover with all the heads in the background, it's about Spider-Man and it's about Peter Parker himself. Who does he want to be? Either way, this is one of the best and most iconic covers from the Amazing Spider-Man run done by the great John Romita. 
At number six on my list is possibly the most underrated John Romita cover of all time. It is a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 41 and the first appearance of the Rhino. Now, Romita was part of several characters' first introductions, including the rampaging Rhino in the issue Amazing Spider-Man number 41. Romita takes this former Russian thug and transforms him into the superhumanly strong, brutal agent bonded to a hide as tough as the Rhino's. In this issue, the Rhino attempts to kidnap John Jameson to turn him over to foreign powers that want his secrets about the U.S. space program. Spider-Man managed to stop him, and of course this issue was also reprinted in Marvel Tales number 30. But back to the cover, what made John Romita great was his simplistic backgrounds and of course the characters jumping out of the page. One of his most underrated in my opinion and still one of my favorite characters in the Rhino. At the five spot on this list is a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 55 in this iconic cover, Doc Ock Wins. Now, what draws me to this cover for the most part is, of course, Spider-Man in the eyeglasses of Dr. Octopus. Not sure if this is the first time we ever see in comics what we're seeing out of the villain's eyes, but regardless, this one is actually menacing. You guys know, if you've been watching some of my videos, I actually went to New York Comic Con last year, and they actually had this original artwork of this cover for sale for well over $300,000. I wish I had the money to buy this thing because it's absolutely awesome, and I had to put it at the five spot on my list. At number four on my list is a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 135 and the second appearance of The Punisher. But what I more so love about this book is the cover itself. What made John Romita great was his attention to bringing characters forthright on these covers. I mean, just look at this thing. At the center of the book, we have Spider-Man, the tarantula symbol behind him, and each person involved in the storyline, not to mention such an awesome yellow cover. Shootout in Central Park. While fighting the tarantula, Spider-Man finds himself under the gun of the Punisher who believes that the wall crawler is on the kidnapping of the ship's crew. The Tarantula allows the Punisher to believe this, prompting a fight between Spider-Man and the Punisher, allowing the Tarantula and his men to escape. When the Punisher realizes that he's been duped, he stops his fight with Spider-Man and tells the wall crawler to meet him at midnight at the museum in Fort Tyron before jumping overboard. On a side note, this book includes Marvel Value Stamp Series A number 4 featuring the things. If you want to own one, make sure it's got the stamp. At number three on my list is a book that I refer to as the Trifecta. It is a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 50, the first appearance of the Kingpin, this iconic cover by John Romita, and the amazing storyline, Spider-Man No More. With numerous problems weighing on him, Peter begins to hate the very name of Spider-Man. Adding fuel to the fire is J. Jonah Jameson, going into another anti-Spider-Man rant on TV. Walking at night, dwelling on all his problems, Peter takes his Spider-Man outfit and throws it in the garbage. The next morning, an excited child brings the outfit to Jameson's office to Jameson's delight. In the office of a mysterious figure known only as the Kingpin, the self-proclaimed Lord of the Underworld tells his men to prepare. Now that Spider-Man is out of the way, there will be no one to oppose him. I gotta be honest, I don't even know how this book appears at number three on my list. It is so iconic and the storyline just brings everything together. We saw this, of course, in the second Amazing Spider-Man movie featuring Tobey Maguire. I wish it played out more like the comics, but regardless, this book is so iconic. I can't believe it's actually priced where it is right now. Still affordable to most of the collectors out there. You want to talk about iconic? How about this book at the two spot? It is a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 121 and the night Gwen Stacy dies. The search ends at the George Washington Bridge where the goblin offers a choice, Spidey's life or Gwen's. Spider-Man is hearing none of it and thus begins a battle in which it appears the goblin is defeated. But as Spidey goes to check on Gwen, the goblin soars back up and tosses Peter's beloved blonde from the bridge. Spider-Man snags her with a web line and begins to gloat to himself about his powers. However, a small snap sound effect by Gwen's neck says it all, and when Spidey finds out she is dead, he flies into a rage vowing to kill the Green Goblin for what he's done. Whenever we talk about yellow covers, we have to put them towards the top of the list. They always sell better when we talk about comic books. This one in particular was one of John's best. Like other covers he's done in the past, bringing the characters who are involved in this story and Peter's life and putting them on the cover in such a way makes you feel what Spider-Man is going through. And coming in at the top spot on my top John Romita covers of all time is Amazing Spider-Man number 39 in the issue that we actually find out Spider-Man and Green Goblin find out each other's identities for the first time. As the Goblin follows him home, he picks up his name on a microphone and learns Peter's true identity. The Goblin confronts him outside and begins his attack on Peter Parker. 
Peter fights to prevent Aunt May from knowing the truth, but Goblin soon knocks Pete unconscious and wraps him in a steel alloy cable. As he's taken to the Goblin's lair, Pete struggles against his bonds. Since he's confident in destroying Spider-Man, Goblin reveals himself to be none other than Norman Osborn. And of course, we all know Norman Osborn is the father of his best friend, Harry Osborn. Again, an iconic cover by John Romita. What draws me to the cover of this book is the light blue in the background, the dark blue purple on the top of the book, and of course, the colors of the Green Goblin and Spider-Man. Just an iconic, simple cover, and I think that that's what John did the best. Most of his covers were very simple, but what he brought out was the angst and the grief in the characters like no one had before in Spider-Man. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I wanted to do something new on the channel, so I figured I'd feature a special artist to me, and of course, that was John Romita. I may do another one on a few couple of artists, but if there are artists out there that you want me to do, drop me comments down below. Let me know which one it is. With that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Lawrence over at Mighty Comics and Collectibles saying thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.